Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In a previous interview with Dr. Gerald Horn, we discussed how guns and God and country are all part of a religious faith of the far right in the United States. The uh, idea that guns and the indiv individual right to defend oneself is, is more an act of faith than an act of logic when one actually works through the arguments of, of how one actually achieves public safety. But there's a reason why, or re some reasons why, I think, that a lot of ordinary people can believe in such a faith, because part of that faith is a recognition of the decay of values in the society, the, the chaos in society, the violence in society. Uh, and, and a lot of that is attributed by uh, such people who believe in, the, in these things to the Democratic Party, and uh, the, the intellectual elites as they see them, but the, the elites of the Democratic Party. And I frankly think there's something to that argument. And now joining me to discuss that again is Dr. Gerald Horn. Uh, Dr. Horn holds the John Jay and Rebecca Moore Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. His latest book is The Counter-Revolution of 1776, Slave Resistance and the Origins of the United States of America. Thanks for joining me again, Gerald. Thank you. When one looks at what's happened to a large extent in popular culture, uh, certainly what's happened in terms of the growing inequality gap, uh, in terms of economics, um, ordinary working people who had some sense of stability from an economy that used to be far more reliable, and with that, ideological and institutional beliefs that seem far more reliable, and a lot of that seems up in the air now, and people feel very threatened, both economically and, and, and in terms of their core beliefs. They feel like the society doesn't believe in much of anything anymore. Um, and, and, and that leads, I think, leads people to, with, with some legitimacy to think that a lot of the leadership of the Democratic Party and their promises are such hypocrisy and that some of this violence needs to be laid on, on their doorstep. So when, when the, ch the charge for gun control is led by that leadership of the Democratic Party, it feels hypocritical because they, they, they're not dealing with some of the conditions that lead to so much mental illness, so much psychosis in the society. And, and the numbers of these mass shootings are certainly increasing. Uh, so the, this feeling that society's spinning out of control um, and that the Democratic Party leadership has a lot to do with that. And of course, that gets exaggerated because it's not like when the Republicans are in power, it's better. But these, this all gets manipulated a lot. And anyway, what are your thoughts, Dr. Horn? Well, I would say that there are profound sociological reasons for what is occurring with regard to mass shootings. First of all, consider the fact that overwhelmingly and disproportionately, those who pull the trigger are men. We should not take that for granted. We should instead seek to analyze why that might be the case, and it does not take an expert in sociology to quickly arrive at the conclusion that many men in this country have been unsettled by the changing role of gender in this country, by the enhanced role and authority of women, by the rise of feminism. There hasn't been an adequate ventilation and discussion of this particular question. And as a result, it has left many men without any kind of understanding of what's going on in society in which they're operating, leading men, as the saying goes, many men at least, to cling with bitterness to their guns. Secondly, with regard to foreign policy, uh, I find it quite striking that a central aspect of U.S. foreign policy in recent decades has not only been war, that is to say settling political and sociological problems from the barrel of a gun, be it Libya or Iraq or Afghanistan, but also helping to fuel a certain kind of religious zealotry, particularly in pre-1979, Afghanistan, and not least in pre-2011 Libya. And then, of course, that particular phenomenon come home, comes home to roost with the killing in Texas, uh, engineered by Nadal Hassan, the killing at the Pulse nightclub, for example. And that general idea 
of settling political and sociological problems through the barrel of a gun should not be thought of as just an exemplar of religious zealots, such as uh, Nadal Hassan in Texas. It's part of the US culture, as noted in our previous segment, going back to European settlement in the 1600s. Well, look at Hollywood movies and television shows. Uh, the number of movies and shows that glorify the most uh, outlandish amounts of killing and slaughtering and you know, that's not new. There's, we've had decades of that kind of culture uh, developing. Uh, and and I, I, again, I go to ordinary working people that buy into this kind of gun, God, gun and country ideology. It's a legitimate concern when they look at what the kind of stuff that Hollywood produces, how, how the level of violence of it. But I also think uh, one of the points that, that the NRA woman made had a kernel of truth to it. I mean, in the uh, conf the um, town hall CNN organized, um, is that there, according to her, there were 39 points where the young man that did the shooting was in connection with the state or social agencies in some ways, whether it was the police force or some kind of social agencies, and they kept kind of diagnos diagnosing him as having mental illness, they, they saw some of his uh, very uh, threatening posts on social media. We have to start, number one, following up on red flags. 39 times in the past year, it was law enforcement or it was social services that went to this individual's home. But, but the, the irony of her statement is she supports, and the NRA and that right, precisely supports the kind of politics that cuts back on social services, that cuts back on mental health care, that cuts back on public, uh, public health interventions. I mean, the, the, the lack of, of interventions in the schools, which is partly a resource question and partly a lack of uh, agenda, but the number of severely depressed, disturbed kids that simply go through school. Now, most of them don't shoot anybody, but often they shoot themselves. I mean, suicide rates are also skyrocketing. It's not just about mass shootings. Uh, you know, why is there such an opioid uh, academic? This, this society is sick. And, and the people who only focus on gun control, and here, again, I would point to the leadership of the Democratic Party and much of the sort of liberal class that think gun control is the answer without dealing with the issue of the rot in the society that is so screwing up people's heads that you know, massive drug addiction, deep depression, high suicide rates. I mean, talk about that healthy society. And yes, of course, let's also talk about gun control, but not to talk about the rest. That's just, a, that's, that is a hypocrisy. Well, first of all, with regard to Hollywood, it's well known, point A, that that particular industry in film and television has a, a more than normalized complement of executives at the top who tend to be campaign donors to the Democratic Party. And point B, as your comment suggested, the cultural products that they produce tend to glorify violence. And then point C, is that the ratings agencies are much more willing to censor, if you like, scenes of sexuality as opposed to scenes of violence and let her rip when it comes to scenes of violence. Then there's the question of mental health, which is quite tricky, because on the one hand, it would be a mistake, as the Republicans are tending to do, to lay, lay this latest tragedy at the doorstep of mental illness. Uh, as suggested, there are many people who have mental problems who do not necessarily pick up an AR-15 and march into a public school and mow people down. But at the same time, the Republicans are pleading in inconsistent counts, as the lawyers like to say, because on the one hand, they're trying to point the finger of accusation at mental health. On the other hand, they're defunding government programs that address mental health. And so obviously they can't have it both ways. They are pleading inconsistent accounts, and certainly they need to be held to account for their inconsistent hypocrisy. And the, the, this thing that this NRA woman says at the town hall where she over and over again called this young man, the shooter, uh, a monster. He's a monster. I don't believe that this insane monster 
should have ever been able to obtain a firearm. This, into, this, this monster carrying bullets to school, carrying knives to school. No, he's another child of ours. He's one of our kids who, uh, he's, he wasn't born a monster. You know, he, if what he did was monstrous, not if, what he did was monstrous. But how does he become that kind of monster? She doesn't, want to she doesn't want to deal with that whatsoever. She wants to demonize him. So it's virtually back to this good and evil argument. Somehow he's an evil seed. And, us, and the good, God, guns, country. We need to go get these monsters. And of course, to do that, we need our guns. Well, I think what you're saying is another problem as well, which is that it's well known that in this country, when there are prickly prickly and tricky political and sociological problems there is a tendency not to analyze the society the soil from which these problems grow but to denounce individual praxis you see that in particular with regard to what happens in the black community for example that is to say rather than denouncing white supremacy or the legacy of slavery and jim crow ongoing racism etc uh, there is a laser-like focus on the imagined frailties and debilities, for example, of single black mothers. And you see that as not necessarily isolated with regard to the black community. You see this also with regard to this question of mass shootings. Rather than do a historical analysis of European settlement and colonialism and dispossession of Native Americans, which would then lead to an indictment of society, it's much easier to affix individual blame on a particular teenager as is happening in Florida as we speak. And just to pick up on something you said, uh, in terms of the sort of history of this ideology of the, the right to have a gun and how connected it is with, with the, the, uh, the God and country and so on, it wasn't all that long ago it was considered a right by a lot of Southerners, white Southerners, it were right to lynch black people. Oh, sure. I mean, once again, there is a reluctance to dig too deeply with regard to the nettlesome problems of this society. You see this, as you have suggested a moment or two ago, with regard to some of the liberals on Capitol Hill. That is to say, when there is a kind of tragedy that has just unfolded in Florida, the mantra is, that's not who we are. That is to say, this is not a problem of these United States of America and the kind of society that has developed over the decades and centuries. Now, if you take that particular point of view, that leaves you with an individual analysis of looking at the real and imagined problems of individuals, which fundamentally does not get you anywhere, because it does not lead to profound and sweeping changes of society, which is so desperately needed in this country. Yeah, it leads to more shootings in schools. Thanks very much for joining us, Joe. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.